Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode in our channel. My name is Ahmed for Idionics, and in this video we are going to talk about a very important concept that is rather not specific to the DevOps world as much as it is specific to anybody who does software development or anybody who uses code files of any kind. If you are a web developer, a web designer, a programmer, or even a writer, anyone who uses text files, should use version control. And that is the topic of this video, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start by the very important question, what is version control and why you should care? Okay, in order to answer this question, let's have the following scenario. You are working as a web developer, you are building a web application. Let's say that you are building a web portal for your company and you're working with HTML files, JavaScript files, style sheets, and so on. Now, working without a version control system will pose the following problems. Let's see. Problem one. Let's say that you are working on the interface of the portal and while you've been working on this interface for like 10 or 15 hours, you realize that it's not looking the way it should look. It can be further enhanced. Some additions need to be added, some code needs to be modified, some visuals need to be removed and so on. So you want to go back a few steps in order to make the required changes. One of the options that you can use to do that is just to press the popular Ctrl plus Z buttons, which is of course short for undo. Undo, 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 and then undo until you reach the point where the file that you are working with, the code file, is at the state in which you can do the required changes. Okay, so that is a possible workaround. However, notice that all IDEs and all text editors and code editors have a limit in the amount of undos that you can do. So what if the version of your code that you want to revert back to is way behind the limit of your program? And a more important question, how can you know which version of your code is the one that you desire? Are you going to just press Ctrl Z and then have a look at the whole file to determine whether or not the code is at the state that you want? I don't think so. So let's say that you managed to have a workaround for the undo program and you had some sort of a mechanism to revert back to whatever changes that have been made to your code file. Let's see the second problem. What if you want to compare those interfaces what if you made some changes to the interface and now you want to have a way to compare the old interface with the new one that you have just written? One possible workaround for this problem is to have several versions of your files. Like for example, header.html.blueBackground, header.html.yesterday, header.html.whatever. You are creating several copies of your file just to differentiate them from each other, just to give yourself or your fellow colleagues an idea about what each file contains, because virtually all of them are serving the same need, which is the header part of the portal or of the HTML page. But which one of them is the one that you want to use? Which one of them is the one that has the interface in your mind that largely depends on the file name that you have set for the code file? Of course, this is just asking for trouble, asking for errors and bugs that are hard to find. Which brings us to problem number three. What if you want to share this code with your colleagues? Most or maybe all large web application projects are managed by several persons, sometimes several teams working on the same project at the same time. All those teams or those persons need to be on the same page. They need to be working on the same version of the code files in order for the application to be properly configured. So how can you share the code that you have written with other fellow colleagues of your team. Let's say, for example, that you are working on the header section of the portal, your colleague is working on the navigation bar and the content area, a third person may be working on the footer area, a fourth person may be working on the JavaScript and style sheets that are going to make this page look and feel right. So all of you must be working on the same version of the code. So if you are going to make changes, for example, to the header section of this page, your fellow colleagues must be notified of this change to act accordingly and change their code to fit the changes that you have made. So how can you do this? How can you share the versions, the different versions of your code files with your colleagues? Are you going to send them each and every change that you made in an email, for example, with a file name that has a descriptive name 
of course, this is not the most elegant workaround. And again, it is error prone and it will cause a lot of trouble and a lot of time and effort wasted. The fourth problem that you can face if you are working without a version control system in place is accountability. What if for some reason the application broke? You are refreshing the page after you and your colleagues have made several changes to the application code and then, oops, the application is broken. The interface is not the way it should look. The navigation bar is not showing correctly. The visuals are misplaced and so on. You know how applications can break sometimes. Now you have the important question, what change broke the application? And the even more important one is who did that change in order to inform us why he or she did that and how it can be brought back to the way it was. You can of course look at the last modification date of the, the files of the application and who did which change, but that's only going to give you the last change that have been made to the application code. It won't give you a history of who did what and when. So to address those problems and other many problems that can arise if you are not using a version control system, you must use this system in order to keep several versions of your code in one place. So what does a version control system do for you? How it can be used to address those problems? A VCS will simply store all your code in something called a central repository. The central repository contains all the code files of your project in addition to all the changes that are made to those files. All the changes that are made to directories or files, whether you change something in a file, add a new file, delete a new file or a directory, all those changes are tracked in the repository. And once they are tracked, they can easily be reverted to, you can easily compare two or more versions of the same file, you can easily go back and forth between different versions of the file without having to press Ctrl Z, without having to keep several versions of your file, several copies of your files with different file names. And you can also share those files instantly with as many colleagues as you want across the globe, as long as the repository is reachable over the internet. So a version control system will keep track of all the changes that have been done to your project files. And also it's going to keep track of who did what when any comments that are made to a version control system must be accompanied by at least the username and the email of the user who did the change. So this will solve your accountability problem and will give you a clear idea about who did what and when. So if the application broke for some reason, you can easily go back to through all the changes that have been made in the past period and see who did which change and when and easily revert that change to bring the application back to the working state. So now you have a clear idea about how version control systems can solve the problems that we have just mentioned. Those systems also offer you a feature that does not solve or that does not address the problems that we have mentioned, but it will give you a very powerful enhancement that is going to be extremely useful in your workflow. In order to understand this feature, let's have another example. While working with your web application, you suddenly discovered a bug. Let's say, for example, that the application works normally in Firefox and Chrome browsers, but it doesn't in the Microsoft Internet Explorer, which used to be a very famous problem among web developers. So you decide that you want to have a fix for this bug and you start working on the code to try to fix that bug. Other colleagues of your team also have some solutions in their minds and they want to work on the code to try to fix this bug. So you and your colleagues want to work on the same code file. Each of you has a solution for the bug that has just appeared in the application. All of you want to work on the same code files without messing with the application. The application should be up and running until the bug is solved. And also each one of you should have a working copy of the application and work in it on his or her own. One workaround for this is to create a clone of the repository. Just create a copy of the repository and start working in it. And once you're done, once you've solved the bug, you can delete the old repository and replace it with the one that you have been working on. But this is not the best option here. Virgin Control Systems offers you the concept of branches in order to address this problem. A branch, as the name suggests, is just a version of code that is separate or that is independent of the master or the main branch. Each and every developer can have a new branch and this branch can even have more and more nested branches and he or she can work on that branch, try the solution for the bug, test it, try it out, and then if the bug is solved and 
If all the members of the team or whoever is responsible for managing the repository sees that this is a valid solution and it needs to be applied to the master branch, the branch can be merged back to the master branch or to the main branch so that the application can be updated with the solution of the bug. So as you can see, with branches, you can have several copies of the repository without having to clone the repository and put it somewhere else. On the same repository, you can have several branches. Each branch can add a feature, solve a bug, or add an enhancement, and then this branch can be merged back with the master branch when the code is ready. So I think now you have a clear idea about the advantages of using a version control system. Let's now have a look at the different types of version control systems in the market. We basically have three types of version control systems. The local, decentralized, and the decentralized. The local version control system is among the oldest systems that try to do version control. In this model, the repository is stored locally on the developer's machine or on the client's machine. There is no central repository. You have your own repository on your own local machine. Of course, the drawbacks of this approach is obvious. You cannot share the code with other developers or with other clients unless you physically transfer or copy this repository to their own machines. This is a very, very old model. And one of the systems that uses this model is called Revision Control System. And it has been released in 1982. That's like about more than three decades ago. The other more recent and currently used model is called a centralized version control system. In this system, you have a central repository that has all the code, all the history, all the changes stored in it. If you want to commit a change, you will have to connect to that central repository over the network or over the internet, according to the way it was configured, and you commit those changes to the server. The drawbacks of this approach is that you have to be connected to that central repository whenever you want to commit a change. If you are working offline, like if you do not have a network connection for some reason, you cannot commit the changes to that central server. You will have to keep those changes local on your system. And of course, that is like working without a version control system at all. Examples of this system are concurrent version systems, or CVS, Subversion, SVN, and IBM Rational Clearcase. The last model in our list is called the Decentralized Version Control System. In this system, you still have a central repository for storing the code and the history of the changes that have been made by whoever uses the repository, but each and every client can have a copy or a clone of this repository local on his or her machine. So if you want to make a change or a commit to the repository, you don't have to be connected to the central repository over the network. You can just commit this change locally, and then you can sync your local repository with the central one whenever you want. That can be done at a later stage. Examples of this system are Mercurial, Git, and Visual Studio Team Services. So now that I have an idea about version control systems and the different types of them, let's have a closer look at Git. Git is one of the most famous open source version control systems out there now. It has been created by Linus Torvalds in 2005, and he created that system in order to manage version tracking of the kernel project. If you don't know already, Linus Torvalds is the creator of the Linux kernel. He created the Git system specifically for working with this huge project, the Linux kernel, and of course, thousands of developers around the world were working with him on this project. They used Git as a version control system in order to track their files. And if you are wondering what Git stands for, actually it stands for nothing. It was named by Linus Torvalds and it is not an acronym or an abbreviation for anything. It's just the way he named the application. There are a number of online services that can be used as central Git repositories. The most well-known of which are Bitbucket, GitHub, GitLab, among others. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and please do subscribe to our channel in order to get fresh content the moment it is posted. If you have any questions or comments, please leave us a comment and stay tuned for more and more videos from Ideomics. My name is Ahmad. Thank you for watching.